It's time for New Wellness TV with Dr. Lee. Join your host, the accomplished Dr. Sherilyn Lee, as she welcomes the leading experts in health and well-being as they explore the advancements in natural health, physical fitness, nutrition, integrative medicine, and self-discovery. <laughs> Good day, everyone. Um, I don't care if it's day or night you're watching the show. I do care. I just want to say greetings to everyone. And thank you so much for tuning in today to another wonderful episode of New Wellness TV with Dr. Lee. I just want to say that I am so excited. I have a wonderful guest with me today, as always. I'm just meeting her and her beautiful mom, uh, which is in the studio. You won't see her, but she's here. Uh, I just want to say that she's going to be sharing some information with us that is really, after me last night being in the hospital with a dear friend who just had a stroke, this is life-threatening. This is life-threatening information. And I want to ask a question before I start. And also, I want you to grab a pen and paper. Pen and paper, because you're going to need to take notes, because you never know who or a family member or someone else, you might need to know these uh, techniques to really see what's going on. So have you or anyone you know ever sustained brain trauma? Car accident, a fall as a child, you know, sometimes we bump our head. Um, I had a new car and it was kind of aerodynamic and every time I would get in, I wasn't used to it being so low, so I would bump my head, which I really think I had a couple of contusions from that. You don't have to lose consciousness to have a concussion, okay? To have a concussion, you don't have to lose consciousness. What is all this doing to the brain? So this is what my guest is going to be talking about today. Dr. Danny, I want to thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm excited. They're all cheering us on. No wonder, bud. How wonderful. Thank you, audience. Thank you. <laughs> okay. So, you know, let's just jump right in. Your bio went out. Uh, we sent out an email. Okay. So we sent out your bio to everyone. Okay. Um, but we're going to be talking about, you know, the brain and what's happening and how to test these wonderful techniques that you were telling me about when it comes to to look quickly for brain tra trauma, right, right. Uh, whether it's the right or left side of the brain, or if it's true trauma. So we're going to be sharing that. And I want, like I said again, please uh, have a pen and paper to take notes, because this is important. And we all have bumped our head on a cabinet or, you know, uh, you know, just simple things. And not knowing down the line, why do I have this type of symptom? And it was basically from head trauma. Right. And, you know, you asked that as one of your questions. But that's something because I worked in the emergency room and used to ask a lot of questions. So that was part of the questioning I would always ask. Trauma is always the number one question. What type right. of trauma that led you into this? So before we start, tell me about you. Okay. Please. Um, my name is Dr. Danielle Olson. And I'm originally from Minnesota. I now work in Santa Monica. And we met several weeks ago. Um, I'm a chiropractor, and I specialize in a form of healthcare called craniopathy, mm -hmm. which is what we got talking about yes. at a meeting one time about how important it is to take care of the skull. And a lot of people don't realize that we have. You know, before we get into that, I know you're moving kind of fast. Yeah. But tell me who you are. I mean, you're here from where? You just moved to California. Oh, I just moved here from Minnesota. From Minnesota. Yeah. Okay. So just and tell me about you and. I think, you know, why I think... Did you, why did you go into this field? I think one of the... Re well, I will tell you that. I okay, think okay. One of the One of the reasons why I'm here is I've, I've had a very magical life. I developed a brain tumor when I was 31 years old. Mm. Uh, I was nearly blind, and knowing neurology like I do, I, I realized that all the symptoms I had it was behind my optic nerves, and I had a very, very small amount of vision left enough where I could see about the size of a quarter. Okay. Which made driving very difficult. And... How old were you? When I was 31. 31. Oh, yeah. that was very young. Yes, yes. Very young. And part of, part of where it was located affected my pituitary gland, so I could not have another baby, and I really wanted another baby. And it, being trained in complementary medicine like we are, mm -hmm. I decided to do natural approach to it. It wasn't a malignant tumor, mm -hmm. so I'm not crazy. <laughs> but I started listening to things that were happening around me, people that were being introduced to me. 
and I met a craniosacral therapist. Yes. And in chiropractic school, we're trained in anatomy and physiology, and we exactly. look at the body as a whole, the chemical, physical, spiritual, emotional, emotional. being. Yes, yes. And craniopathy, which is my specialty, is something a lot of doctors don't know about. No, they don't. So I went to this craniosacral therapist, and I saw her two times, and I realized... She did something with the head. I had something in my head, and I wanted to get rid of it. Mm -hmm. And during our second course, as I was driving to her her office, I was terrified because it was winter in Minnesota. Okay. (laughs) And the whole time I was driving there, I just kept saying, today's the day this is going to be healed. I know it can be healed. The body is able to be created. The mind is so powerful, too. Absolutely. But you're setting that intent. You setting know. that intent the whole yes, time, the yes. whole time. And you and I have talked about this, the power of the mind. Oh, yes. And as I was laying there, I had some very interesting experiences, met an angel, um, had some conversation with the angel, mm-hmm. asked what if I was doing the right thing. And they told me you need to look within, which I thought was interesting because, you know, I love working with the brain. And I was like, well, look within, what does that mean? During the course of our our session, this angel brought my father to me and he had passed away four and a half years earlier. Mm -hmm. And I had a conversation with him and apologized for not seeing him before he died. And as soon as I said that, I realized, oh my gosh, I didn't see you before you died. The tumor manifested right behind my optic nerves. And And we had talked about this in my doctorate about how important it is to acknowledge when things exactly have bothered us mm-hmm. and and I never realized I didn't forgive myself for that and as soon as I realized I said oh my gosh dad the power of forgiveness I manifested yes. this didn't I mm-hmm. and as soon as I said it out loud something p- penetrated the top of my head and I received a miracle healing and it took a matter of minutes and the tumor vanished I have no scar tissue I had another baby. <laughs> and since then... What a beautiful story. Oh, it's, but um, the power of forgiveness, this is what I tell everyone. Right. It's amazing. Right. Yes. And how great for you to be with your friend last night at oh, the hospital. Yes, yes. So Thank important you. to reach out Thank to people. You. So since that, that tumor healing happened, I have had some experiences where I've been able to also help facilitate other mm-hmm. miracle healings. And... Getting to know the brain as well as I did, I decided to branch off and do a specialty called craniopathy. Wonderful. And that's what got us here. Yes. So <laughs> we were talking about head trauma, and, and head trauma doesn't necessarily have to be a concussion. It doesn't exactly. have to be something that knocks you out. A simple bonk to bonk the head. To the head. And, and when, I, when I ask the initial questions to my clients, or there's a question on the front page that says, please tell me about when you hit your head. And I will tell you, more often than not, people are like, I never hit my head. And I'm like, never? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Ever? Really? And they'll say, well, no, but boy, I've been dealing with depression for years. Well, how long? Oh, two and a half years ago. Like, isn't that interesting? Back in our history, we were talking about mm-hmm. how you hit your head onto the kitchen cupboard door. Two and a half years ago. Yes. <laughs> Two and a half. Just and, follow the and pattern. And all of a sudden, are like, yeah. oh, I get it. Now mm-hmm. I get it. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, yeah, I guess there was this, and, you know, I fell off a horse. And, you know, they, all of a sudden, people will remember remember things. I had one person, she was 72 years old. And as I'm questioning her, I'm like, it really seems like you've had significant head trauma. Right. And she said, no, no. I said, are you sure? I'm pretty perceptive with these things. Yeah. No. And she goes, well, wait, no, I did fall off the top of a Ferris wheel, and I landed on my forehead when I was 12. Mm -hmm. But that was 60 years ago. And I said, same brain. Same, yeah. (laughs) Same brain. Nothing changed. Except, yeah. These little little, um, hits can cause a tremendous amount of Of trauma, dysfunction of the brain, and causing things like um, sleeplessness, brain fog, things like that. So I, br- I brought a model of a skull. And, and, and that's when we don't need to have more psych meds. Right. And that's what they'll do. They said, oh, well, all these things that happened to you, instead of, you know, I worked hospitals, mm-hmm. instead of getting that type of a history to find out what happened in the past, they want to prescribe more medication for right. it. What right. Which, you know, you need to be worked up properly to find out what's going on. And a lot of people say, what do you mean worked up? 
you know, by a person who is conscious enough and think outside the box and practice integrative or complementary medicine, right. uh, which we both do, right. which is really important. So you brought a brain. <laughs> I brought a skull. I brought a model. A skull. Of a, I, brought my, I brought my brain. Not the brain, but the, the skull. <laughs> this one does not have a brain. Okay, this is a model of a skull, and I brought it because I wanted you to see all the different colors. So each of these bones of the skull, there's eight of them, all have joints that go together. So you'll see that there's, there's lines right here. There's joints in the back of the eyes. Very common issue. There's joints in the roof of the mouth here. And now, if you tilt that a little bit so they can see that mouth is open, not going to bite her fingers, <laughs> but the mouth is open, and she's filling the roof of the mouth, yep. which is really important. Right inside here. Yeah. Okay. So there's two joints right there. Those translate all the way up to the top of the head. And what we find with... Uh, if these joints are not moving, especially up in here, we have things like anxiety, depression, and things like that. So in craniopathy, what people like me are trained to do is assess how these bones are moving. So as you breathe, these bones should expand. You breathe in, you breathe out. You breathe in, you breathe out. And this is happening all the time. Every time you breathe, this is supposed to be coming up, coming out. And the reason that we have this movement is there's cerebrospinal fluid around the brain. That's what brings the nutrients, the oxygen, brings the waste away from the brain. Exactly. And so we have to have this pumping movement. And so what I do is I analyze how these are moving. And sometimes I have to put a glove on and actually work inside the roof of the mouth. It's a very, very simple adjustment. One that I think should be maintained probably monthly for people because there's little things that are happening all the no, time. Not, not to cut you off, but yeah. is this a, uh, a technique that a person could kind of check themselves? You could. I um, mean, just for our listening audience right now, so right. they can say, you know what, I need further. I need further testing. Um, if it's something that they have for, yeah, the roof of the mouth, what they have to, and what are they feeling for? One way to test if... If your system's working properly, that's that's a really easy way, is to just put your hands down at your side and close your eyes. Okay. Okay, as you're standing. And, and if you're you, just standing. You're doing it standing. Mm -hmm. I'm going to sit here. But you're doing it standing with your eyes closed. And if you start going front to back, that means these aren't working right. <laughs> okay? So the brain knows it needs to get... Balance. It needs yeah. to get the cerebral spinal fluid, fluid around no, the, the brain so it's right. getting the oxygen, so it's getting the nutrients, and it will do it with posture if there's an issue happening mm -hmm. up here. There's another simple way. Um, I like that. So people remember that. You know, remember yeah. that technique. Yeah. And, and, and doing a neurological examination when mm -hmm. I was in training, that was one of our tests too. Yeah. You know, to see if the body would sway right. and mm -hmm. which way it would go, and then put the hands out to the side of the body as mm -hmm. well. So, yeah, that's really So that's, that's, very a, that's good. a simple self assessment. And you can test this on yourself because you're going to feel. Sure. You can feel yourself swaying. Right. No one else has to do it for you. Right. Yes. Right. Um, the other the other interesting ways, and I see this really, really often, is I'll have somebody, I, th I think I showed you this, where I have somebody hold their arms up, lay, lying down, but I'm going to be doing it sitting okay, here. So they're lying on their back. So they're lying on their back, mm -hmm. they put their arms up, and I test their strength by pushing down, just have them hold their arms strong. And then I'll ask them to turn their head one way and their feet the other way, and if... If, if their brain is working right, that'll stay strong. If I have them turn their head the other way and their feet the other direction and they go weak, then we know that there's an issue with cranial torsion, which happens up here in the roof of the mouth again. And it's a very simple fix. It's, it's painless. I have them place their arms and legs in a certain position, and I put a gloved finger on, and I go in here, and I have them breathe in, breathe out, breathe in, breathe out. And I've are you doing a maneuver or a massage inside the roof of the mouth when it, they are doing the breathing? They're doing the breathing, and I'm doing a maneuver, basically making like a U-shaped correction. Good. Okay. And then you test them afterwards, put their arms up strong, have them turn head one way, feet the other way, head the other way, feet the other way. And you can tell by their, their arm strength. Usually they're kind of like, what? <laughs> what did you just do? Because it doesn't feel like I did a lot. But it's very specialized training, mm -hmm. and it makes all the difference in the world. And when you find somebody that has cranial torsion and you start explaining to them, like, oh, think about this. If you turn your head to the left and your brain function is slow, 
which means your reflexes are slow, you're likely, more likely to be injured or strain a muscle with your head turned to the left. Because think about it, your brain's not connecting as efficiently exactly. with it turned to the left. But yeah. now you get it corrected and all of a sudden things start to work right. Mm -hmm. And I thought it was really interesting. Um, I was looking at the AARP, that dates me. <laughs> I was looking at the AARP Why magazine. don't you tell people what the AARP, AARP what it is? AARP is a... Um, it's a bulletin that's sent out for the Association of Retired People. <laughs> I'm far from that. Well, maybe that's why I didn't know about it. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, yeah, we're, we're young at yeah, heart, yeah. young in mind. Mm -hmm. But I thought this was interesting because I've been talking about this for years. I mean, I've been doing this for 20 years. And all of a sudden, the AARP came out with this great thing to say, guess what? <laughs> There's this function that the, that the body has to go through to cleanse your brain. Yes. And what we have found is, if you think about it, the brain uses about 25% of our energy yes. during the day. That's a lot. And anything 25%? That's, now listen to yeah, this. Anything that's producing energy is going to have waste products mm -hmm. as, a re, as a result of it. So we have to have a way to remove those waste products. Exactly. One is this movement. <laughs> the other is with sleeping. And the movement with the breathing. With the breathing. So yep. people should do really good deep breathing Absolutely. exercises of throughout course. the day. And most people do not breathe properly. No. <laughs> you know, in through your nose. Right. You know, take your time out through the mouth. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I tell you this because a lot of people are watching the show there at work. This is something you can sit at your seat at work and do mm -hmm. you can, while you're driving. Just do this often. Be get yourself in the mind of doing this often, and you feel you feel so much better right away. Right, right. That's why I'm not exhausted for being up almost all night, right. because yeah, even though I didn't sleep a long long hours, there's other things that I did too. Right. For the brain, exactly. And exercises. So. Well, and, and one thing, I mean, it's this really society important. we know anxiety is rampant. Oh it's, yes, it's probably one of the highest things that people are dealing with now. Yeah. And there is a way with breathing. I just thought of that mm -hmm. that you can. Kind of bring your quiet yourself, quiet yourself down, and bring the lower your blood, lower, lower your, your blood, blood pressure, pressure which is, is amazing. All you have to do is breathe out slowly. You know, they even have come out with equipment mm -hmm. that you could place on your body, and as you're breathing, it plays music. Oh, and if you're breathing incorrectly, you don't get the right tune. I thought that was so clever. I wish I had invented that. Yeah, that is interesting. So that, I have a lot of my uh, hypertensive patients yeah. who said, "I can't breathe. I don't breathe right." I forget to breathe. I'm like, how could you? You're still alive. <laughs> but I have them by the device, and okay. now they're breathing so because they can hear the sound. They right. can hear other than the breath, the breath sound. Mm -hmm. They hear the music. It's fascinating. Yeah, it's really nice. Yeah, you know, the breathing is such a such a simple thing. Mm -hmm. And you know, let's say you're let's say you're in a stressful meeting, mm -hmm. and and you're trying not to be nervous. All you have to do is just breathe out slowly. You know, breathe in normally. Breathe out slowly. Maybe for a count of. Eight. Mm -hmm. Nobody in the meeting is going to realize you're I nervous. I do that when I have speaking engagements. So everybody stand up. <laughs> so by the time I get them stand up and breathing, yeah. you know, I said, breathe with me. And I have them do a little phatic kind of little uh, something that I show. Um, and then I'm relaxed myself. So you who are listening <laughs> and I've been at your function, <laughs> you know why I do that now. So that we can all, so definitely I could be more relaxed. But that very, is very, very important. So back to this AARP, so that was interesting. What they found is... When people don't sleep, here we go again, with sleeping well, the brain's not getting rid of the waste matter the way exactly. that it should. And when we sleep, there's, so these, there's these muscles called glial cells that surround the, the neurons of the brain. And when we sleep, they actually diminish in size. So you have about 60% the size. So you have a lot more room in the brain for that cerebral spinal fluid to flow. Mm -hmm. And for the, they call it the lymphatic system, <laughs> to remove the waste out of the brain. Exactly. And one thing I wanted everybody to remember was the best way to clean your brain, if you want to call it that, mm -hmm. is to sleep fetal position on your left side. The venous return is, is mostly on the right side. If you sleep on your right side, you tend to compress that. And so if you can at least start to sleep on your left side mm -hmm. so that, that the brain can get that waste matter out of there, you'll be a lot sparklier. Yes, and I... Um, had Less brain fog. Yeah, studied some information on that a mm -hmm. while back. Detoxing the brain a little bit there mm -hmm. and sleeping on the left side. Yeah, you know, that spinal fluid is so much better. So, you know, make a note of that and have, do this with your children, especially if you have children. Have them start sleeping if they can. Put mm -hmm. a, some people, uh, I know my daughter likes to put a pillow behind her back so she can kind of stay in that position sometimes. Right. She did that a lot when she was pregnant. 
and stayed on it. You know, those nice big large pillows. So she's pillows. So she stayed on her on her left mm-hmm. side. So keeping that in mind, that is really valuable uh, information as far as the brain is concerned and the c- cerebral spinal fluid to really sleep that way. It makes a difference because I sleep that way. Right. I, I just, it just feels good. I just had a, a thought of a memory from probably 17 years ago of a, a baby that came in that was four months old, and she had never slept more than 15 minutes. Can you imagine what her family was like? 15 minutes at a time. And that's something that I think a lot of people would be good to know about this. If you see a baby, like when I looked at this little girl, her eyes were really unlevel. <laughs> So if you look at, at the eyes, one eye on her was, was kind of down just a little bit, and her nose was off just a little bit. She had had a very fast birth, and when a baby is born, their, their cranial bones squeeze together so that they can be born vaginally. And this baby was born so fast that her cranial system just didn't get balanced mm-hmm. properly. And so they, this family brought her in to me, and one adjustment, they called me four hours later, and they're like, um, she's still sleeping, is that okay? And I said, of course, <laughs> poor child's tired, yeah, yeah let mm-hmm. her sleep, and she's perfectly functioning, happy, normal, sleeping well, mm-hmm. teenager now. Wonderful. Yeah. Uh, you know, that's really great. Now that I'm going to have my um, number 10th grandchild, oh I'm going to make sure that she comes, we bring her to you, okay. <laughs> or you will take you to her. Okay. Okay, so definitely and check that out. Yeah, because um, so that's a vaginal birth, and and you, now we got to go C sections. No, oh yes, C sections. A lot of people think those are a much kinder birth. <laughs> yes, mm-hmm. they are very difficult on a on a baby's head. The the babies need that that compression of the the skull in order to get the the proper movement of the the skeletal bone or right. skull bones to move the way that they should be. Any baby that's born born C section should have their cranium checked. Absolutely, positively have them checked. Yes. So those who are listening who have children or grandchildren, um, and you don't have to, you know, they don't have to be a baby to do this. Right, right. They need, you need to be checked, period. You Absolutely. Know, even uh, if you're a teenager now and even older, I would say have it checked. I, I think this is part of a preventative way of assessment that everybody should have. We're going to do a workshop together. Okay. And we're going to bring in people just to do this quickly mm-hmm. and go over some things because of the fact that we have so many symptoms and problems that we don't know where did this come from. You know, uh, I have a friend who constantly has, she, she thinks it's fluid, maybe, you never know, cerebral spinal, spinal fluid draining from her nostrils every time she leans forward. She said something is just always draining well, only when I lean forward. But she did have some head trauma. Oh. Yeah. So she's watching the show. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Not going to say your name. <laughs> <laughs> but and, uh, now there's help. There is help. So I want to say that, you know, all these wonderful tips, I'm going to let you go on because I know there's so much more. <laughs> so we covered depression mm-hmm. and stress. And when we talk about stress, too, I always throw this in about She's your passionate about telling stories of amazing women sure who are you rocking the world and empowering women. women. Serum, cortisol level is. You could do a saliva or a serum. Quickly, you can go to Life Extension, which I always say, and order your own lab work and see a, do a 24-hour cortisol level just to see where you are because we are, we are living in a very stressful, you know, cesspool here. I mean, it's, it's just sad. It what's is. happening with us today with, and don't watch the news you will be even more stressful but you've got to know kind of what's going yeah, on mom. around you <laughs> you got to know what's going on around you here you really have to know but not to stay in front of the TV 24-7 some people see the 4 o'clock 5 o'clock CNN well we'll mention stations all day <laughs> so anyway don't do that to yourself because that's a really a good way to put yourself in a really bad successful mood unless mm-hmm. you're going to leave there and go see a funny movie and get some laughter going on right. to release those wonderful healing endorphins. So let's move on. Let's move on. One of the things I thought back in this AARP magazine that was interesting was they're realizing with, with having this waste product that needs to be removed from the brain, if it's not happening properly, they're absolutely sure that there's potentially degenerative diseases like Alzheimer's that can mm-hmm. be associated with that. Mm-hmm. So Basic brain health, sleeping well, breathing right, making sure your skull is moving the way that it should. 
should be good to go. Right. We, I have a really long checkoff list as mm-hmm. it relates to sleep pattern and sleep hat hygiene. We're actually going to have another show. I will on, on sleep and sleep pattern. So the positioning that you're sleeping in is now you're bringing to the table, mm-hmm. which is really important for detoxing the brain. And keep, really keep this in mind. Please share this show with your friends and family because each one teach one so that we can stay ha- happier and healthier. You know, so I'm going to let you go ahead. and. So another thing that we need to talk about is concussions. I mean, that's a hot topic right now. Yes, it is. And, you know, we were talking about minor minor head trauma, but but when somebody has had a concussion or, or thinks that they may have had a, a concussion, mm-hmm. the best thing that you can do is go into a dark room, no TV, no lights, no gaming, <laughs> no phone, <laughs> Please don't being take the, the cell phone the, in there. No, no. And yeah. I, I know I had a very, very bad um, skull fracture and, and a concussion several years ago. So I know what it feels like. It is scary. You really do not feel like yourself. Yeah. And your thought patterns will be kind of off. And um, so what I'd learned, thank God for my education, was go in a dark room, lay down, put it, if, if you had a um, really significant bunk like I did, put ice on it. Have things readily available in your home, like fish oil, a good quality fish oil. That's important. Mm-hmm. I don't think a lot of people realize some of the fish oil that's out there is pretty toxic. Because some oh, of it's the, very toxic. Some of the companies use solvents to actually pull more oil out of the fish. Mm-hmm. And the easy way that you can check that, write this down, mm-hmm. <laughs> is open a capsule of fish oil into a styrofoam cup. And if it dissolves a styrofoam cup, throw it in the garbage. Not the cup. You can do that too, but great throw tip. all that fish oil <laughs> out in the garbage. Great tip. Get a good quality fish oil. It's great mm-hmm. for anti-inflammatories and um, good to eat eggs, mm-hmm. high, high protein sources. So I'm looking for things that, that you have around your house that are that easily, you can do easily accessible because the last thing I wanted to do was get in my car and drive somewhere. Yeah. You know, you read about choline and stuff like that. Can you imagine going into a store with a, oh, no, <laughs> with a shopping can't. list and going, oh, and you, you want to really, room? if you have a head trauma, you want to really watch your symptoms too. If, mm-hmm. if you're starting to experience double vision, uh, if the head is really pounding, or if you feel something like um, coldness in that area, you know, uh, all the tips that you just gave is absolutely wonderful. But if the symptoms are a little severe, I suggest you call 911. Absolutely. Because you don't want to go lie down and slip away into right. a coma. That would be the worst thing. Or if you start feeling nauseous and start vomiting, and if the vomit you know, just shoots out of your mouth with your child or yourself, and that's more projectile vomiting, you want to make sure that you get to a hospital right away. Right. There is some signs you can test for your children. Um, we're not going to get into that because it's a neurological sign to see if there's a, a brain tumor as well right. by taking an object and rubbing it along the sides of the feet to see which way the toes go. Right. So if the toes flare out or if they go down, it tells you something too. But don't try to do all that. If you have head trauma and you're feeling very dizzy, the first thing you want to do is get to an ER. Right. And you might just want to call 911. Right. And so thereafter, when you go home, we can deal with the fish oil. You can deal with right. some other things um, and nutritionally and find out where you are nutritionally in the beginning. So I, I like SpectraCell, mm-hmm. so you can test the micronutrition as well to see where you are uh, nutritionally. And so you don't kind of guess and start taking things. You just can go ahead and do tests. Right. So there, there are even uh, tests you could test your essential fatty acid. Right. So you want to know your EFA, and when you take them, you want to know, are you taking the right combination of essential fatty acids? So in New Wellness Healthcare, that's what I do. I make sure that we're not just taking supplements. Uh, we're taking the right supplements. Right. For, for brain function, I don't think you can really get too much DHEA and EPA right. for the brain. You need that for the brain, for good brain health. Yep. And the eggs with the choline. But that's after. But if you suffer brain trauma, especially a child, Get them to the hospital, right. you know, you know, right away, because you want to rule out, rule out exactly what's going on, and then go from there. Right. Yeah, I agree. Mm-hmm. Um, I heard a, a thing one time that just sat with me for uh, probably thirty years now. If you wear out your body, where are you going to live? And I was thinking about all the. Oh, work that's that great! If you wear out your body, where are you going to live? Right. That's and I think really good. one of the things that I think most of us would agree. Th- 
the last thing we want to have happen is to lose our mind. Yes. It's an awful, awful thing to see yes. somebody's mind go. And so many of these things that we're talking about are just simple maintenance. Mm-hmm. We take care of our cars. Let's take care of our bodies, too. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Number one. Number one. So um, concussions. And we know what's going on in the football arena mm-hmm. with concussions. Unfortunately, my grandson, well, it's unfortunate for me, but not for him. He plays football. And he had recently a concussion. Mm-hmm. Uh, he did not um, lose consciousness, but he had a concussion. He was very dizzy. He was very stunned. Uh, so I want you to show everybody the tests that you have people do if you want to rule out. I think you just went through it with the arms. Yes. And that's the line on your back. So that's not standing up. Right. The standing, the standing one that's the easiest to tell is just close your eyes and just see if they're, if they're moving back and forth. Mm-hmm. Um, you can test arm strength and have them move their eyes in different positions. Sometimes I have them lay on their back and we'll have them tilt their head and move their legs w- one side and then tilt and, and move it the other way and we'll check the, the body strength. But o- overall, the main thing I do is I actually feel like really get on and feel what their head is doing. It's hard for people to do self-assessments. Yeah, on that one, no. Yeah. They can't do the self, yeah. no. Not their skull. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, no, you can't. Yeah. So um, with the skull itself, so what manipulation? I know inside the mouth, mm-hmm. uh, what you're going to be doing, what do you do to the skull itself? It's, it's just basically getting on areas that, that may be stuck. One of the things, like, there's such a common, common thing. People call it TMJ, which is actually temporal mandibular joint. It's actually TMT, temporal mandibular joint. And the TMJ joint is right here where the two yeah, bones right connect, rest. right here. Yep. People clench their teeth and have the problem. Yep. People grind their teeth and have the problem. Right, and it's so common. It is, it, it's co- very, very and common. that yes. affects this bone right here, this brown bone. So that's, your, that's called your temporal bone. That bone does the same movement as the ilium bone of your pelvis down, down low here. And what we've found is when people clench their teeth, they tend to have an area in their pelvis, one, one joint on one side of the other tends to be a little looser. And so there are ways to prevent clenching on your own. So that, that a lot of times will stop that behavior from happening. So what happens if, if it's a little bit loose and a joint down here, it translates all the way up to the, the skull because yes. they, they do work together. It's all connected, yes. They all work together. So all day long, all day long, when you're weight-bearing, which includes sitting or standing, when you're weight-bearing, if the brain is getting a signal from your pelvis that there's a little instability down here, and you're not necessarily going to feel pain from it, but the brain feels it. Mm-hmm. Uh, what happens is as soon as you lie down and you don't have weight on your pelvis anymore, the body's natural reaction is to tighten up here and clench the jaws and try to open up that brain. So the brain knows it needs that, that circulation and that, that movement. So to clench these down, push those in, and the jaw will tighten up. So here's the secret. Write this one down, too, because I know everybody knows somebody that, that clenches their teeth when, yes. they, when they sleep. Yes. There's a little spot on the bottom of the ball of your foot, okay. kind of in that natural arch kind of underneath where your toes are. Mm-hmm. If you rub your feet on a ball or on, on a foot massager or even with your fingers before you lay down, so you have to do it before you lay down. And just that, kind of massage, Get to take your thumb mm-hmm. and massage in that area. Right. Press right. down. Yep. Yes. Mm-hmm. What that will do is it'll, it'll erase that signal that has been sent up to the brain all day that while you've been weight bearing. It'll erase that signal so that you don't clench your teeth. It works okay. amazing. So people who are having reflexology on their feet, they should be sleeping really good. They should. Mm-hmm. They shouldn't be clenching their teeth anymore. Yeah. <laughs> but at least this is something you can do on your own. Right, right. Yeah, and it'd be good if you take a little lavender oil mm-hmm. as you're massaging that area and put a little lavender oil there, right. too, for relaxation. That would be great as right, well. Right, Yeah, what a wonderful, great uh, tip. Now, what about uh, TM, uh, people who have tinnitus, ringing of the ears? Same place. <laughs> ringing of the ears. That bone. This is, a, this is a major, major bone of the skull. Um, I also do Qigong, so that helps with, with tinnitus as well. Um, if these bones of the skull are not moving right, a lot of times that's when you're going to get that, that ringing. It's a that's, buzz sound ringing. Yeah, and it's yeah. really irritating, yeah. really, really mm-hmm. irritating. It's a simple uh, cranial adjustment with breathing and, and helping these, these bones right here get moving right. Um, what else? ADD. 
So common. Well, let me go back to the other because one uh, thing we get the, we do this part with every condition. We look at every aspect. Mm -hmm. So people would ring into the ear. We want to make sure that they're not having a diet high in aspartame or no aspartame Mm -hmm. because aspartame is one of the causes too. And um, look at the emotions as we talked about the emotions, but definitely aspartame would definitely cause a lot of ringing of the ears. And then, you know, move on up, move up the ladder and get your adjustment done Mm -hmm. because this here is so important because there's so many people that really complain. That's one of my questions on my questionnaire. Right. You know, it's pretty in depth. People say, oh God, I got this 17 page. <laughs> yeah. But it asks a lot of questions and there's a reason for each one of those right. questions. And you want to rule out pathology, mm-hmm. obviously. Oh yes, as well. most definitely. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so we were just touching on ADD, ADHD. Mm-hmm. And what I've found in my practice is, especially with the children, if I teach them to just put their finger in the roof of their mouth, and they breathe and just kind of push up on this part of their... Now, turn it to the sides because they can see your finger. See where her finger is all the way inside the mouth, and And the child can do this to themselves. Yeah, and and if they're they're feeling like really frantic and out of control, they can just take their thumb, and as they breathe in, just kind of push up. Breathe in and push up, and then release it and push down, or release the thumb. Breathe in, push up, breathe out. And it works really, really well for calming About them down. How much repetition should it be? Three, Probably three times. Okay, three a couple times, times a day. If, yeah, if, or yeah. if they're feeling There's no really, side effects really to it. So. No, no, yeah. it's, it's just mm-hmm. getting that natural skull movement going the way what that it should. What about people who used to suck their thumb and kind of push it up there? They should not you have know, had any they problems. Do, huh? They do say that, that that's a self um, calming process that especially babies go through <laughs> no, if, really. they, if they do feel mm-hmm. like like they've need the help that they that naturally calms them down they just figure it out Amazing, really isn't it mm, maybe that's why it was so calm i mm-hmm. suck mine yeah <laughs> and if, that's if, why one looks different than the other <laughs> from years ago but i was calm yeah mm-hmm. i can tell <laughs> the, uh, the, <laughs> thank you yeah, you're welcome um we've also had really great results with dyslexia mm-hmm. so, and that's a very frustrating frustrating learning disability yes, for people yes. and um, what we have found is a lot of times it's an uh, issue with their frontal bone and just a simple simple test again non-invasive yeah you're just testing their arm strength and having them move in different positions and a lot of times you can get relief maybe not cure it but at least get it so that they have a little more clarity yes and that's what we want, you know, day by day, a, a better quality of life, mm-hmm. moment by moment. Right. And the more you do this, the better you or you should heal and feel. Right. Yes, I would think so. Yeah. But um, those are some very good uh, tips that you have given. Okay. Some information that everyone, if you don't have this going on in your home, you know someone else that does. Right. Especially the relaxation, I like that. Mm-hmm. You know, so that could be for ad- adults as well as children. You know, if you're feeling really stressed out, just go into another room Mm -hmm. and then place your thumb, you know, wash your hands, (laughs) (laughs) place your thumb in your mouth and just press up and do the deep breathing. Yeah. Yeah. So when when you breathe in, breathe in. Yeah. Breathe in and push up. Breathe in and push (laughs) up. And you don't have to push very hard. Okay. It's just a very gentle. I'm glad you said that. (laughs) I'm glad you said that. So (laughs) people coming and going, I don't know what I did to the roof of my mouth. (laughs) I didn't tell you to do it that hard. And watch the nails. If you have sharp nails, watch those nails. Yes. (laughs) Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. So I want to say, make sure before you do that, make sure you do wash your hands. Very good. Because this is not just for women, it's also for men. Right. And children. Yep. Male, female. So this is wonderful. So come on, you, you got great tips here. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I know one of the things that you and I talked quite a bit about, and I really do want to focus on intention. Mm-hmm. Intention is such a powerful thing. And, and like for my, my own case and my own healing, my intention was there. I was not going to let them cut open my head. In my type of tumor that I had, it came back in about... 80% of cases after surgery. Mm-hmm. And I just started in practice, and I, I did not want to have my head opened up. Right. And I wanted to figure out why did I have this. And so with intention of healing, mm-hmm. I think a lot of people have had major successes. In fact, I just read one today that I thought was so fantastic. Um, this couple, he, they ended up getting to, together, moving in together, and, and he lost 60 pounds. And they couldn't figure out why, and they found out that he had a malignant tumor. Mm-hmm. 
did chemo and radiation, and he didn't respond well to it. So they changed, like I did. I forgot to tell this part. I, I actually fasted for 10, 10 days. I just said, i got a clean house because something's causing that tumor. But they changed to a vegan diet, and their intention was to get rid of the tumor, and it was successful. Mm, okay. And so the power of the mind is very, very is great. Very, yes. Yes. And, you know, you brought up in the very beginning uh, about your eyesight and not mm-hmm. having the closure and forgiveness with your father. Um, and this is going to be very short, but I had a flat tire one day and met this wonderful mechanic. And I said, well, you know, this whole journey was so beautiful. Met this wonderful mechanic. And he started telling me the story about his best friend who uh, he kind of just left his wife, divorced his wife, left her, didn't know she was pregnant when he left. Uh, he, he remarried and had two kids. Uh, his, his friend had gone to him and said, you know, man, you have a son. You, you have a son. Something that I want. I have six girls. You have a mm-hmm. son. And he had two girls by his second marriage. He said, don't you want to see your son? He wants to meet you, you know, as he was growing up. And he said, I never want to ever see him or her, ever. And he went blind. Wow. Oh. Now, there's usually some medical things that, you know, are going on, too. But as soon as he kept, he said it repeatedly, I never wanted to see. And when he told me that, I said, wow, and he's blind? I said, but he said it. I never want to see. You have to be careful with words. Right. Words are powerful. And even getting well, I had a person who said, I mean, she had... um, breast cancer and I usually don't like to say the C word I just say abnormal cells people Mm -hmm. who know me and it was so bad that it really looked as though she should have had it removed had a mastectomy and she said I came into the world in one piece I'm not having pieces removed from my body I'm not having my breast removed my breast will heal and so I sent her to someone else because it was so bad I didn't want her to have a systemic infection. Right. Uh, and plus, she wasn't keeping it clean. And that's what my fear was. You got to do everything, too, if you want to try to keep, you know. And she came back to me about six months later, totally healed, mm-hmm. totally healed. But that was, I did as much for her. But they kept saying, we don't understand why you're not real sick, why this is not happening with you, because of nutrition and everything we had already done. But her thought I am going to keep my breasts. The same thing with my grandfather who said, I'm going to live to be 100. He told me this since I was a little girl, little girl. And I said, okay, granddaddy. Okay, granddaddy. I'm going to live to be 100. I said, okay, granddaddy. And two years ago, um, probably about two years ago, he turned in January, mm-hmm. he turned 100. Well. And so the next day he stopped eating. So I said, well, granddaddy, you're, you're not leaving us yet. And so he lived for about eight months longer. And then he said, you know, I'm, I'm ready to go. I'm ready to go. I live past my 100. <laughs> wow. And so the intent, you know, uh, we, we have to be careful. So my, my intent was to never grow old, looking wiser, uh, never have menopause, which I never have. Um, and so those were some of my things. I mm-hmm. said, that is not mine. Menopause is not my friend. Now, I watch hormone levels and do all that, but I'm not having these symptoms people have, the hot flashes, the this, the that, the moose. I'm not having that, and I never did. So the things we tell ourselves is how what we become, you know. I mean, that reminded me of when I was doing my Qigong training with Dr. Mm-hmm. Effie Chow. We were talking about the power of words. Yes. And we were on a, a news segment one time, and these the um, anchors were just bantering back and forth, back and forth. And, and you know, she's like, well, he's like the little brother that I never wanted. And, and she's just like, wow, you can't talk like that. You know, you've got to be careful. You need to lift each other up. I mean, people are starting their day by watching you. And, and they're like, what are you talking about? And so she gave this demonstration. And she said uh, she had them hold their arms strong. And mm-hmm. again, that's another a good way to Well, she monitor. said hold your arms strong. You just hold it straight yeah, out. Yeah, you hold it straight out. Like this. Okay, straight out, strong. And and she would test their strength, and she'd say, say something nice about him. And this anchor was like, I can't think of anything. Mm-hmm. And she said, say you like his tie, but mean it. 
And so she's like, oh, I like your tie, and it was strong. She goes, now say something else. And she's like, you're just such a, you know, such a dork or something like that. And, and she couldn't hold her arms strong. So we started talking about words and, and mm-hmm. the importance of them. And when you use the word just, everybody uses the word just. You know, like Nike, just do it. Just absolutely takes our energy away. Mm. Test, test on your friends. Have them hold out their arm. Say, do it. Test their arm strength. Then have them say, just do it. And they will lose their strength in their arms. So the power of words are really, really important of what you put out there just. to people. So Sorry, Nike. <laughs> <laughs> might want to get a new logo. <laughs> yeah, just do it. Do not use the word digest. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Or I'll try. I'll try. We know I'll try. It will never work. No. <laughs> I, I like what uh, Les Brown, very dear friend, he says, try to sit down in a chair. <laughs> Try to sit down in a chair. You either sit down or you don't. Right. Yeah. Just try. Yeah. So you either do or don't. I, I try to remove that from my vocabulary. It's, it's, it can be hard. It, it is hard. Because every time I say the word, I say, oh, you know what? You know, um, I don't know if I'm going to be able to make it. But uh, I will call you if I can. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Perfect. So we start, you know, finding another way to say it. So you don't say, I try. Because usually when you say, I try, you don't go anyway. Right. You don't make it. I will do it. I will do it. Feels good, doesn't it? Yeah, I will do it. <laughs> then you got to work hard and be committed to exactly. do it. <laughs> exactly. But then yes. you feel good about yourself. Yeah, definitely. You took definitely. care of it. Mm-hmm. So that was really good. I love that. So we have covered so much now. We have a few more minutes left. And in just a couple of minutes, what do you want my listening audience to take away from? I want you to look into the camera like you're looking into their eyes. And what do you want to tell them, each person? I want you to believe in your body and your mind. I want you to know that the health is within. You have the power to do whatever it is that you feel you want to be successful. All of us were created with this ability to heal. And it's all in our mind. We can, we can take care of it, think through it clearly, know that we own this. We are very powerful. And if you wear out your body, where are you going to live? I love that. Isn't that great? That is. That is. I want to thank you for that. And I want to thank you so much for being here today. Thank you. You're just absolutely amazing. And (laughs) I just love your spirit. It's just wonderful. It's just something about today and right now. I feel full. But it's full of joy. It's full of joy. So people I know saw me wipe away a little tear. Mm -hmm. But it's full of joy. It's just something wonderful I feel is about to happen. Take this information in. Share it with your friends and family because it's something that could save your life or your family's life. And these are simple procedures. Yeah. And uh, we are going to put up your website. Okay. Um, or better yet, uh, he has your website already already yeah. up. So yeah. <laughs> thank you so much, Jarvis, over there. <laughs> thank you. And thank I, you. Do, I do love working with challenging cases. Those people. You sound like me because yeah. I that's I didn't leave work to ten thirty because of some challenging cases. Yeah. You and I have so much in common. I know. But I'm not a chiropractor, so I don't do what you do. But it's amazing in my CRT test, mm-hmm. um, which is FDA approved for breast screening. It's a, it, 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 there's an axle component, yeah. and people with uh, TMJ, migraine headaches, one leg shorter than the other. All this stuff comes up in their report. Mm-hmm. So I always ask, are you having headaches? Yes. Well, then I don't do that part. So they will be coming to you. Yay. Yeah, they'll be I coming to you that. for all of the migraine headaches and all these other things. And, and general maintenance. Yeah. And, you know, and I have to tell people, when you're on a, a weight reduction program, mm-hmm. not weight loss, because I'm not trying to find your weight, okay? <laughs> when you're on a weight reduction program, m- more, so, more so a lifestyle change, your body should be adjusted after because things shift after you gain or lose. Right. You know, things will shift. So you should definitely always have an adjustment done after losing weight because that pull from the weight on the hips and on those muscles and on your spine, you know, it totally has shift. So we're going to be doing a lot of business together. Yeah, because you do things I don't do and vice versa. So I'm just really thankful for you being here today. Thank you. And I want each one. There's so much going on right now. Please, please take time so to love yourself. 
Please take Not time far. to pamper so yourself. Okay, Please, if you even do your uh, own foot massage, get yourself some lavender. Take time for you. Take time to do your deep breathing exercises. I know. Take no, time to call that, someone um, else and tell them I love the, you. Because uh, you might not have that opportunity to pick up me, that phone okay. to make that she call again. So when someone is on your oh, mind, take time to call them if you have a chance. I don't have time to talk. Just call to say I'm thinking about you and I love okay. you. Okay. So turn There's around. a reason I'm saying this today. Yeah. So for those who are listening, please take Great. time to do that. I want to thank okay. everyone for tuning yeah. in today to the... New Wellness TV with Dr. Lee. I have something very exciting for you for 2018. We're adding another component to the show that's going to be hot. So everybody can tune in and get well and be happy through this wonderful journey in life. And again, I always say something, and I have everybody to repeat after me. But before I say that, I want to say that your brain and your thoughts are so powerful. So keep in mind, keep those thoughts thoughts clean break, go back and, and whatever you want to happen thought, in your life first envision all, that you know people are doing vision boards you know, and different things but envision yourself doing minutes, wonderful yeah. great things okay. Stop, don't like don't see the negative all the time show, in people right? and in yourself okay. see the positive and watch how it shows up for you that's my friend Robbie Motter watch how it shows up for you so I want to say take care of yourself now repeat after me I am so yeah. grateful. So grateful. That yeah. I am you know what I, with that. Yeah. a and, magnet you know, for, like for miracles. Right. Hug yourself, but, hug but someone else, else have a blessed day. Thank you. Well, and <laughs> it's time for New Wellness TV with Dr. Lee. Join your host, the accomplished Dr. Sherilyn Lee, as she welcomes the leading experts in health and well-being as they explore the advancements in natural health, physical fitness, nutrition, integrative medicine, and self-discovery. It's time for New Wellness TV with Dr. Lee. Join your host, the accomplished Dr. Sherilyn Lee, as she welcomes the leading experts in health and well-being as they explore the advancements in natural health, physical fitness, nutrition, integrative medicine, and self-discovery. <laughs> Good day, everyone. Um, I don't if it's day or night you're watching the show i do care i just want to say greetings to everyone and thank you so much for tuning in today to another wonderful episode of new wellness tv with dr lee i just want to say that i am so excited i have a wonderful guest with me today as always i'm just meeting her and her beautiful mom uh which is in the studio you won't see her but she's here uh, i just want to say that she's going to be sharing some information with us that is really after me last night being in the hospital with a dear friend who just had a stroke, this is life-threatening. This is life-threatening information. And I want to ask a question before I start. And also, I want you to grab a pen and paper. Pen and paper, because you're going to need to take notes. Because you never know who or a family member or someone else. You might need to know these uh, techniques to really see what's going on. So have you or anyone you know ever sustained brain trauma, car accident, a fall as a child? You know, sometimes we bump our head. Um, I had a new car, and it was kind of aerodynamic, and every time I would get in, I wasn't used to it being so low, so I would bump my head, which I really think I had a couple of contusions from that. You don't have to lose consciousness to have a concussion. Okay, to have a concussion, you don't have to lose consciousness. What is all this doing to the brain? So this is what my guest is going to be talking about today. Dr. Danny, I want to thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm excited. They're all cheering us on. Yeah, wonderful. Us on. How wonderful. Thank you, audience. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so, you know, let's just jump right in. Your bio went out. Uh, we sent out an email. Okay. So we sent out your bio to everyone. Okay. Um, but we're going to be talking about, you know, the brain and 
what's happening and how to test these wonderful techniques that you were telling me about when it comes to to look quickly for brain tra- trauma, right, right. Uh, whether it's the right or left side of the brain or if it's just true trauma. So we're going to be sharing that. And I want, like I said again, please uh, have a pen and paper to take notes because this is important. And we all have bumped our head on a cabinet or, you know, uh, you know, just simple things and not knowing down the line, why do I have this type of symptom? And it was basically from head trauma. Right. And, you know, you asked that as one of your questions. But that's something because I worked in emergency room and used to ask a lot of questions. So that was part of the questioning I would always ask. Trauma is always the number one question. What type right. of trauma that led you into this? So before we start, tell me about you. Okay. Please. Um, my name is Dr. Danielle Olson. And I'm originally from Minnesota. I now work in Santa Monica. And we met several weeks ago. Um, I'm a chiropractor, and I specialize in a form of healthcare called craniopathy, mm-hmm. which is what we got talking about in yes. a meeting one time about how important it is to take care of the skull. And a lot of people don't realize that we have. You know, before we get into that, I know you're moving kind of fast. Yeah. But tell me who you are. I mean, you're here from where? You just moved to California. Oh, I just moved here from Minnesota. From Minnesota. Yeah. Okay. So just and tell me about you and. I think, you know, why, I did think, you, why did you go into this field? I think one of the, re- well, I will tell you that. I okay, think one okay. Of the, one of the reasons why I'm here is I've, I've had a very magical life. I developed a brain tumor when I was 31 years old. Mm. Uh, I was nearly blind. And knowing neurology like I do, I, I realized that all the symptoms I had it was behind my optic nerves. And I had a very, very small amount of vision left enough where I could see about the size of a quarter. Okay. Which made driving very difficult. And how old were you? When, I was 31. 31. Yeah. Oh, that was very young. Yes. Yes. Very young. And part of part of where it was located affected my pituitary gland so I could not have another baby and I really wanted another baby. And it, being trained in complementary medicine like we are, mm-hmm. I decided to do natural approach to it. It wasn't a malignant tumor, Mm -hmm. so I'm not crazy. (laughs) But I started listening to things that were happening around me, people that were being introduced to me. And I met a craniosacral therapist. And in chiropractic school, we're trained in anatomy and physiology, and we look at the body as a whole, the chemical, physical, spiritual, emotional Emotional. being. Yes, yes. And Craniopathy, which is my specialty, is something a lot of doctors don't know about. No, they don't. So I went to this craniosacral therapist, and I saw her two times, and I realized she did something with the head. I had something in my head, and I wanted to get rid of it. Mm -hmm. And during our second course, as I was driving to her her office, I was terrified because it was winter in Minnesota. Okay. (laughs) And... The whole time I was driving there, I just kept saying, today's the day this is going to be healed. I know it can be healed. Yes. The body is the able to be created. The mind is so powerful, too. Absolutely. But you're setting that intent. You setting know. that intent the whole yes. time, the yes. whole time. And you and I have talked about this, the power of the mind. Oh, yes. And as I was laying there... I had some very interesting experiences, met an angel, um, had some conversation with the angel, mm-hmm. asked what if I was doing the right thing and they told me you need to look within which I thought was interesting because you know I love working with the brain and I was like look within what does that mean during the course of our our session this angel brought my father to me and he had passed away four and a half years earlier Mm -hmm. and I had a conversation with him and apologized for not seeing him before he died and as soon as I said that I realized Oh my gosh. I didn't see you before you died. The tumor manifested right behind my optic yes, nerves. Yes. And it's, and we had talked about this in my doctorate about how important it is to acknowledge when things exactly have bothered us. Mm-hmm. And and I never realized I didn't forgive myself for that. And as soon as I realized I said, "Oh my gosh, dad, the power of forgiveness." I manifested yes. this, didn't I? Mm-hmm. And as soon as I said it out loud, Something penetrated the top of my head, and I received a miracle healing. And it took a matter of minutes, and the tumor vanished. I have no scar tissue. 
I had another baby. <laughs> and since then... What a beautiful story. Oh, it's, but um, the power of forgiveness, this is what I tell everyone. Right. It's amazing. Right. Yes. And how great for you to be with your friend last night at oh, the hospital. Yes, yes. So important to reach out Thank to people. You. So since that, that tumor healing happened, I have had some experiences where I've been able to also help facilitate other mm-hmm. miracle healings. And... Getting to know the brain as well as I did, I decided to branch off and do a specialty called craniopathy. Wonderful. And that's what got us here. Yes. So <laughs> we were talking about head trauma, and, and head trauma doesn't necessarily have to be a concussion. It doesn't exactly. have to be something that knocks you out. A simple bonk, bonk to the head. To the head. And when I asked the initial questions to my clients, there's a question on the front page that says, please tell me about when you hit your head. And I will tell you, more often than not, people are like, I never hit my head. And I'm like, never? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Ever? Really? And they'll say, well, no, but boy, I've been dealing with depression for years. Well, how long? Oh, two and a half years ago. Like, isn't that interesting? Back in our history, we were talking about mm-hmm. how you hit your head onto the kitchen cupboard door. Two and a half years ago. Yes. <laughs> Two and a half. Just and, follow the and pattern. And all of a sudden there, they're yeah. like, oh, I get it. Now mm-hmm. I get it. Okay. So, yeah, I guess it was this. And, you know, I fell She's off a horse. She's passionate about you know, telling stories of amazing of women who are remember, rocking the world and empowering things. women to live, person, love, and thrive. Years old. Here's your host, and as Catherine Gray. It really seems like you've had significant head trauma. Right. Welcome, said, welcome, well, welcome to Live Love Thrive. So sure? happy to have you join us today and our very special no, guest. She is a well, trailblazing wait, no, I did attorney fall that's off the top looking of a serving up wheel justice for on my women. When I was so 12. happy to have on. But that was Lisa 60 Bloom. Years ago. Thank Lisa. You so Lisa. Yes, you same, so <laughs> same brain. Same, yeah. Same brain. Nothing changed. You know, so, um, except, yeah, maybe these, a lot of people don't know. A lot of people do that. You're the daughter of Gloria Allred. I am. Yeah. Wait a second. Wait a second. You know what? That's who that woman is. You didn't is. even know. Yes, that is my fog. mother. Exactly. That yes. is my hero. So I, I brought a model of a skull. And, and yeah. that's when we don't need to have more. Yeah, that's some tall shoes. It, it right. is. And, 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 you and you know, but you're filling them. I will say you are filling them. Well, thank you. I try every day. And you should know that instead of getting that type of a history to find out what happened in the past, they want to mention that. I love that it's just like in y'all's DNA. And my son is about to go to law school. So we're fantastic. People yes, say, what do you mean work I out? love that. And you know, you know we were talking about who was you were born in Philadelphia, but uh, moved here when you were like five to Los Angeles. Five years old years as a baby. Medicine. My mom was a single mom uh, at that time. A single did. mom. And which it's so really interesting. So uh, you brought a brain. A great majority <laughs> I brought of a skull. I brought a model. A skull. <laughs> <laughs> I brought my brain. <laughs> not the brain, but the skull. This one does not have a brain. Okay, this is a model of a skull. Yes, and independence. I brought it because I wanted you to see all the different colors. And they had to learn to do things. On their so own each of these and bones get around and of the skull is eight of them. I couldn't solve all their problems. All have them. joints I, I that go together. So you'll see that there's there's you know, lines right here. There was nobody there to tell me I was doing it wrong, so I got to do it eyes. my way. Yes. You know, there are advantages to being very a common mom. issue. There's and joints in the roof of the mouth here. And I would get a break. And yeah, if you tilt that a little bit so they could see that mouth is open. Well, I'm not so gonna bite her fingers, uh, growing up, but the mouth is open, yeah, and she's filling yeah. the room. Sounds like a, yeah, a, a book. Really <laughs> <laughs> yeah. okay. So there's two um, joints right there. To be Those translate all the way up to the top um, of the head. And what we know, find with I, I know she's uh, such a if these joints are not moving, are, especially up in here, we have things like anxiety, depression, and, and things like that. Have so in craniopathy, what people like me are trained to do is assess and, um, how these bones are moving. Person, so as you, you know, breathe, everybody these bones should expand. You breathe in, and, yes. nobody's you perfect. Breathe out. You know, I will say I had breathe on. Um, in, you breathe out, uh, and this is happening um, all week, the time. Uh, Every time you breathe, this is supposed to be coming out. Yes, lifelong friend. And the reason that we have this movement is there's cerebral. I did around the brain. That. That's what oh. brings the nutrients say, um, to oxygen, brings the waste <laughs> away from the brain. <laughs> well, right really now. And so we have to have this you know, I, movement. Most of my career, and so what I, I do is I analyze how these are right. moving. Uh, well, or I was and sometimes I have to put a glove way. on and actually work inside the roof of the mouth. It's a very, very simple adjustment. One that I think should be maintained probably monthly for people. Because there's little things that are happening all the time. You know, I try. Is this a technique that a person... Mm-hmm. Could kind but of 
it, to me, check it's themselves. All about my clients and the cases that we you fight could. For. Oh, I mean, yeah. just for I, listening you, audience I right now, so because so, so you know what, I need so further. Here, here, here's the way I, I need further it. testing. I if it's something that they have for, yeah, the roof of the mouth, what they have to, and what are they selling for? One way to test if if your system's working properly, that's that's a really easy way, is to just put your hands down at your side now, right? And I get and close your eyes. My clients didn't. Right, they okay. find as you're standing, in place and, and, and you're just you're standing. You're doing it standing. Mm-hmm. I'm going to sit here, right. but you're doing it standing with your eyes and closed. And, and if you start going them, front right. to back, that, for me because they are surprised that means they didn't yes. intend. these aren't working. They were intending right. to be a makeup okay. artist. Or a so the brain knows it needs to get balance. It needs to get the cerebral spinal fluid around the brain, so it's getting the oxygen, so it's getting the nutrients, and it will do it with posture. So there's if there's an issue happening up here, there's another simple way. Now, I like that. So people remember that. You know, remember yeah. that yeah. technique. Yeah. Yeah. And, 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 and doing a neurological really examination when I was in training, that was one of our tests, too. Yeah. You know, to see if the body would sway right. Right. and which way it would yeah. go, so that's and then put the hands out to the that. side of the body uh, as well. So, yeah, you know, you that's really good. So that's, that's, that's a good. simple you, a And you can test this on yourself because you're going to feel. Yeah. Sure. So you can feel yourself sway. No one else has to do it for you. The other interesting way is, you know, people do probably did. Really, yeah, really know, often. I, but I'd say, is, I think I'll have somebody, I, th- I think I showed you this, where I have somebody hold their arms and up, you are defending lying, so lying down, but I'm going to doing it. Have so, so, so they're lying on their back. So they're lying on their back, they put their arms up, them. and I Let's test their strength by pushing down, just have them hold their arms strong. Oh, you did. And then I'll ask them to turn their head one way and their feet the other way. Yes. So Janice Dickinson, if their brain is working right, that'll stay strong. If I have them turn their head the other way and their feet the other direction, and they go weak. Week, certainly the most famous one then we that know that there's an issue publicly and yeah. say with cranial torsion, Cosby which happens wow. up here in the roof and of the mouth. And it had again. happened in 1982. And it's so a very simple it fix. It's, it's painless. No, it's I have them place their arms and legs in a certain position, and I too bad. put a gloved finger and then on, and I, I go in here, and I have breathe in, breathe out, breathe in, and breathe out. Ha! Now she might have a And are you doing a maneuver or... A, a massage inside the roof of the mouth when they are doing the breathing. They're doing the breathing, so and I'm doing a maneuver. Oh, it's basically smart. making like a U shaped. Thank you. I went on CNN and I said, okay. and then you test them afterwards. I think Janice Dickinson strong, has a defamation turn, case against one Bill Cosby. I hope way, she calls me. I didn't the other way, you can tell by their arms. And she did call me. Usually they're like, what? What did you just do? Because it doesn't feel like I did a lot, but it's very specialized training, and it makes all the difference in the world. And when you find somebody that has cranial torsion and you start explaining. Up to like, the U.S. Supreme Court, oh, and think we kept about winning, this. winning, winning, winning. They kept appealing, if appealing, appealing. You turn your head to the Finally, left, we got a huge and victory for her. Your brain I'm not allowed to say the dollar amount, slow, but I am allowed to which say means your reflexes are slow. You're likely, more likely to be injured and it's huge. or strain and a muscle with your head turned to the left appeals, because think about it. Your brain's not connecting as efficiently. Exactly. With turned to the left, but now you get it corrected, and all of a sudden things start to work right. And and with that was really interesting. I was looking at the AARP that dates me. Looking at the AARP. Uh, what did you tell people what the AARP is? AARP is a, um, and she it's got a bulletin that's sent out yeah. for Every the Association of Retired People. <laughs> I'm far from that. Oh, yeah, that's why I didn't know about it. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, yeah, we're, we're young in yeah. 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 young in mind. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But I thought this was interesting because I've been talking about this for years. I mean, I've been doing this for 20 years. Black China. And all of a sudden, the AARP came out with this great thing to say, guess what? There's this function that the case. that the body has to go so through to cleanse posted, your brain. Uh, you know, and what we have found is, if you think about the brain uses about and, 25% you know, of our energy of during the day. That's a lot. And anything that's, her, her, yeah. her, yeah. anything that's producing that energy point, is going to have waste products to. As, a re- so as a result of it. So we have to have a way to remove those waste products. So, well, actually, part of it's still in litigation. This movement. The other is with sleeping. And the movement with the breathing. With the breathing. So people should do really good deep breathing Absolutely. exercises of throughout course. the day and most people do not breathe abuse. properly no. <laughs> you know into your nose domestic abuse isn't right. just hitting you know, somebody take your time out of the mouth mm-hmm. and I, and I tell you this line. because a lot of people are watching people, the show that work this is something you can sit at your seat at work and do mm-hmm. you, while you're driving just do like this often be get yourself in the mind of doing this often and you feel you feel so much better right away that's why I'm not exhausted for being up almost all night because yeah, even though I didn't sleep yes, a long, long hours, abuse, there's other things that I did.
very it quickly. Now, see, I'm so for the brain and exercises. So. Well, and, and one thing, I mean, this society, we know anxiety is maybe didn't rampant. Know that they could oh, yes. Lost Probably one of the highest of that. So, and things that people are And you can go in and get a temporary restraining order even way, without with a lawyer, breathing, no, without any that, charge. Just go in and explain kind of to the judge. Bring your bring quiet yourself. Quiet yourself down. Go in and lower your blood Lower your blood pressure. Which is amazing. All you have to do is breathe down and if they do it again, You know, they even have come out with equipment that you could place on your body information. and as you're breathing um, it plays so music oh. and if you're breathing incorrectly uh, you don't get the right tune and, and I thought that was so clever I wish I had invented that yeah that is so there, I have a lot of my then, uh, hypertensive um, patients yeah. who said I can't breathe I don't breathe right I forget to breathe I'm like, I know you, you're still alive <laughs> but I have them buy the device my transgender and now they're yes, breathing so that's what I'm also very proud of so I represent here in Los Angeles three transgender women and a gay man they went to a yeah, local you bar know, on the day is such of a, downtown such a LA thing. Pride. And you know, let's say you're all day uh, stressful uh, meeting, doing work and, in and you're the trying not to be nervous. LGBT community. Also, you have to just breathe out. Celebrating so how down, great it is and letting people know about their rights eight. and how they can get mm-hmm. health care. Nobody in the meeting is going to realize you're I do that when I have speaking engagements. Everybody stand up. So by the time I get to stand up and breathing, you know, I said, breathe with me. And I have them do a little phatic kind of little something that I show. And then I'm relaxed myself. Which is very so offensive. you who are listening, and, <laughs> and I've been at your function, them, you know why I do that now. Shoot them. So, so we they all, went up so and reported this to the security. Very, very important. Security removed so them, back to this AARP, right to so that was interesting. What they found is when people they don't said, well, sleep, do here we go leave? again, we didn't do anything sleeping wrong. well, the brain's not getting rid of the waste pride the way that it should. And when we sleep, there's these muscles called glial cells that surround the neurons of the brain. And when we sleep, they actually diminish in size. So you have 60% the size. You have a lot more room in the brain for that cerebral spinal people, fluid to flow bars mm-hmm. just for and themselves. for the, the, so the we had a press conference um, <laughs> to and we are remove the waste out of the brain. And, exactly. part of the and one thing I wanted everybody to remember was training, the best way to clean your well, brain, if you want to call it that, okay. is to sleep fetal position on your left side. The venous return is, is mostly on the right side. If you sleep on so, your right side, you tend to compress that. So let's that. see the training. You and know, so especially if you at least trans start issues, to sleep on your left side mm-hmm. so, so that the that brain can get that waste matter out of there, you'll be a lot sparklier. Yes, and I had less brain fog. Yeah, studied some information on that. Detoxing the brain a little bit there and sleeping on the left side. Yeah, that spinal fluid is so much better. So, you know, make a note that of that and have, do this with your children, especially with children. Mm-hmm. Have them start sleeping mm-hmm. if they can. Put a, some people, more more uh, I know my daughter likes to put a pillow behind her back but, yeah. so she can kind of stay in that so position All sometimes. The, you know, she did that a lot when she was pregnant. And trans people, like, what did the gender binary ever do for me? The sooner we get rid of it, the better. The sooner I saw that there is an actor who's trying to get rid of the male-female category. It's really valuable information as far as the brain is concerned and cerebral spinal fluid to really from sleep billions. that way. It yeah. makes a difference because I sleep that way. Right. But they were saying, you know, I, we don't I just sort people good. based I just on had a, a thought of a memory from probably age. Why are we still 17 years ago of a, right. a baby that agree. came in now, that was your background is you, four months old to, um, and she had never slept more than 15 uh, yeah, minutes. Well, Can you imagine yeah. what her Please, family was yeah. like? That's our rival. And that's something that I think a lot of people Yeah, when I was in college, I was on the debate team at UCLA and we were the When I looked at this little girl, her eyes were really unbelievable. Right. I knew there was yes. another school in there. Yeah. Yes. Uh, two great schools. So if you look at it, well, at um, UCLA, I, mean, I, I was, <laughs> well, Yale is the number one law school in the country. The UCLA, I was all about very debate. Fast My team birth. traveled all over the country, and, you know, researched until the middle of the night. When a baby is born, they're, really they're cranial bones and we won the national squeezed together so that they can be born vaginally. Of schools. It was and this baby was born exciting. so fast I was the top debater. that her cranial so system just that will not always be something that really meant a lot to me because we worked so hard. So this family brought her into me and one adjustment they called me four hours later and they're like um she's still sleeping is that okay and I said of course no (laughs) poor child's tired yeah let her sleep and she's my mother went to law school when I was in middle school she 
she well worked really hard. Teenager now. And I saw Wonderful. how hard she worked. Yeah, I said, really great. I don't know what I'm going to do, that I'm gonna but have it's not going to be that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Number 10 and then when I was in college, sure I volunteered at a bad women's shelter called Sojourn in Santa Monica. And I worked with the kids of bad women. And it was very meaningful work to me. So that's a vaginal birth. And now we got to go C-sections. my mom said, C-sections, a lot of people think those are a much kinder what you're cut out to do. You were the national champion debater. They are very difficult so she said, on, a, on a baby's you know, head. The, the, the babies LSAT. need that, that mean compression of the, so the skull it, in order I to get the, well. the proper she said, okay, movement we'll just apply to law schools. It doesn't have to mean anything. Skeletal ball. Oh, right. skull and I said, okay, I applied, and then I got into Harvard, Any Yale, baby and all the rest. And then she said, well, just go see them. Checked. Right? It's so funny. Absolutely. So she suckered me into it. But I'm glad you did, Mom. I'm very glad. 33 years later. Children grandchildren. I'm very glad. And all the women that you And you don't have to, you know, they don't have to get baby to do this. Right. Right. For one they need, you need to be checked, period. Would, you know, I now you know even uh, if you're a teenager or an even older, I would say so have to check. I, I think this is part yes. we are going on of a preventative and, uh, way of assessment so, that so everybody should me. have. We're going to do a workshop together, and we're going to bring in people just to do this quickly and go over some things. Because of the fact that we have so many symptoms and problems that we don't know where did this come from. You know, I have a friend who comes and he has. Yes. She, she thinks so I don't want to take all the credit. I will take the blame Cerebral when there's mistakes, spinal, but spinal I don't want to take all the credit because, because I don't she do lean forward. everything, and nor could I. So I have a wonderful she said something is just always draining well, only when I lean forward. And, but she did um, have some head trauma. As I said, we do cases all over the country. Yeah. And probably so she's watching the show. Hi. Hi. Not going to say your name. But now there's help. There is help. I had a case. So I want to say Jones that, you know, all these wonderful picture. tips, I'm going to let you go on because I know there's so much Cassidy more. Jones so we covered depression and stress. And when we talk about stress, too, I always throw this in about your cortisol level to make sure that you know what your serum cortisol level is. You can do saliva or serum. Quickly, you can go to Life Extension, which I always say, and order your own lab work. Since then, And see, do a 24-hour cortisol level just to see where you are because we are. We are and living in a very stressful, you know, cesspool here. I mean, it's, it's just sad uh, what's happening with us today. And, with, another woman and don't and watch the news. You will be even more stressful. So but you got to know kind of what's going on around you. You got to know what's going on around you here. You really have to know. But not to stay in front of the TV 24-7. Some people see the 4 o'clock, 5 o'clock. Do you think it's going to help deter? Well, I mention all day. I hope so. So anyway, yeah, don't I do that. Because so so that's, that's a really long, right? that's good right. way to put yourself you in a really right bad, successful right? mood. Well, unless you're going to leave there and go see a funny movie and get some yeah. laughter maybe going on right. Right. to release those wonderful so. healing endorphins. So let's move on. Let's move on. One of the things I thought back in this AARP magazine that was interesting was they're realizing with having this waste product that needs to be removed from the brain, if it's not happening properly, they're absolutely sure that there's clients, potentially you are helping degenerative so diseases like Alzheimer's that can right. be associated Jones, with God that. So, so basic brain health, I think. sleeping Long well, breathing she right, making sure your skull is moving the way that it, it should. I mean, she walked through the fire. It should be God good to go. Her. Right. We, I have a really long checkoff list as it relates yeah, to I sleep pattern that, uh, and sleep hat hygiene. Away, uh, We're actually going to have another show. I will on, I on so sleep admire, uh, and sleep pattern. So, so positioning you're sleeping in is now you're bringing up. to the I table, more more which is really important for detoxing the brain. Like and keep, really keep this in mind. Please share this show with your friends and family because but, you know, each one teach past, one so that we can stay ha happier and healthier. You know, you know, un, so I'm going to go ahead and... Well, and a lot so still another does. thing that we and need to talk about is yes, I mean, that's a hot topic right now. And also, right you know, yes, I salute those who are... And we were talking about minor minor head trauma, trauma but, but when somebody has had a concussion through, or was, or I'm thinks that they may have had a, a concussion, the best thing that you can do is go into a dark room. You know, no I didn't TV, take no lights, tops and talk no gaming, it, it <laughs> no phone. Please don't take the, the cell phone the, in there. The no, no, and yes. I, I know I had a very, very bad um, Our culture has skull fracture a and, and a concussion several years ago, so I know what it feels like. Yeah, it so is how old you are, scary. But I'm you really do not oh, feel like yourself. Oh, remember when nobody talked and about this. Believe me, I've had a lot of people come out of my show talking about sexual harassment for the first time. So what I'd learned, thank God, from my education was go in a dark room, lay down, Put it, right if, it. if so you it had a, uh, me. 
and really I know significant bonk like I did put ice on it. Publicly, it have things it readily available in your home, like off. fish oil, yes, a so good I'm quality really fish oil. That's important. That I don't think a lot of people realize you some of the fish oil that's out there is pretty toxic. Because some, oh, of the, very toxic. some of the companies oh, use solvents to actually pull more oil out of the fish. Purpose. And the easy way that you can check that, yeah. like this down, <laughs> is open sure a capsule of fish oil into a styrofoam cup. And if it dissolves the styrofoam cup, throw it in the garbage. Not the cup. You can do that too, but throw all that fish oil out in the garbage. Get a good quality fish oil. It's great for anti-inflammatory. And good to eat eggs. High High protein Can sources. So I'm sure. looking for things that sleep, that you have around your house I mean, that are me, I am so easily, so easily accessible. Because the last I thing I wanted to do was get in my car and drive somewhere. I know you read about choline and, and stuff like that. Can you imagine going into a store with a, oh, no, <laughs> with a shopping list? You want to really if you have pet trauma, you want to really watch your symptoms too. Yes, if you're starting to experience double vision, the head is really pounding. You feel something like coldness in that area. You know, walk a uh, more all the tips that you just gave uh, is you know, absolutely they, wonderful. But if, if the symptoms are a little severe, money, I suggest you call 911 do, absolutely. because you don't want to go lie down and go slip away into a coma. Yeah. You know, that would be the worst thing. Debt. Or if, if you start really nauseous, you start vomiting. If the vomit, you know, just shoots out of your mouth with your child or yourself, that's more projectile vomiting. You want to make sure that you get to a hospital right away. There is some signs you can test for your children. She's emailing me. We're not going to get into that because it's a neurological oh sign. Yes, 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 you can. I would love to have brain tumor as well. Oh, I love that. By Sorry. taking People's an object and rubbing it along the sides of the feet to see which way the toes go. So if the toes flare place, out or if they go down, it tells you something too. But don't try to do all that. If you have head trauma and you're feeling very dizzy, the first thing you want to do is get to an ER. And you might just want to call 911. And so thereafter, when you go home, we can deal with the fish or well, you can deal with right. some other things um, and nutritionally and find out where you are nutritionally in the beginning. So I, I like spectra cells mm -hmm. so you can test the micronutrition as well and then on to see a, where a you are note, I just uh, nutritionally. You, uh, and so you don't kind of guess and start taking things. You just can go ahead and do tests. So there, there are even uh, tests you can test your essential oils. So you want to know your EFA. And when you take them, you want to know are you taking the right combination of essential fatty acids. So in new wellness this healthcare, that's what I do. I make well sure that we're not just taking supplements. Uh, we we're taking the right supplements. So. But for so brain function, you have I don't think you can really <laughs> get too much yes, uh, If you're on that Appalachian Trail, brain. my friend you just that walked that really? Jane McCord. And, uh, and the whole thing? Yeah, the whole okay, thing. So that's I didn't do the whole thing on the Appalachian Trail. I've done segments of it. I did go up Kilimanjaro. I have done the Annapurna Circuit in Nepal, which is an 11-day trek and very challenging. You want to rule out. Rule out exactly what's going on in the you want to do that? Because I love it. It's Beautiful. Yeah. I heard a, a thing me, one time that just sat with me for uh, is the mountains probably 30 years now. If you wear out your body, where are you going to live? An and I was thinking about all the Oh, that's great. If you wear out your body, where are you going to live? Right. That's and I think really good. one of the things that I think most of us would agree, the last thing we want to have happen is to lose our mind. Listen, you I need an to awful, angel. awful thing to <laughs> yeah. see somebody's mind go. I do need go. to take a break. And so many of these things that we're talking about are just simple. Does. I think it was John Muir who said the we mountains are calling and I must Let's go. take care of our bodies too. Exactly. That's how I feel. Like, yeah. That's that. Without that, I number don't one, I number one. Right. I love right. So right. I live um, in the hills. Concussions. I live among coyotes and we know and what's going on in the football arena. Bunnies hopping around. Concussions. To, Unfortunately, my grandson. So, um, well, so you're a big animal rights advocate as well as a human football. rights advocate. I yes. love and that. And he had um, recently a concussion. Is there something uh, uh, he did that not we don't know about you that you might lose consciousness? Oh my goodness! But he had a concussion. He was very um, dizzy. He was very stunned. I love to play uh, Lexilus, so which is like I want you to show you by the test. Oh, that's another kind of stress on the phone. It's a game you can play on your phone. I think you just went through it with the arms, and that's lying on your back. So that's not standing up. I will go. And the standing, the standing one that's the easiest to tell yeah. us is, is close like your eyes and my see wife loves that if they're crossword moving puzzle it, thing. Uh, I like crosswords, but yeah. Lexilis yeah. is my thing. If I'm on a conference positions. call and it gets boring, sometimes I have yeah. my <laughs> mind <laughs> <in the back. laughs> Uh oh, now the people <laughs> on the other <laughs> end are going to know. I love giving that away. On hold, waiting for the judge. 
but work safe. Overall, you know what? The, I, the way I, I ra- my husband feels like me, but I, you really know, it, get on it's and a stress feel relief. What it's their free. head is doing. It's you know, hard for it's people to do self assessments. Like, yeah, yeah on that one, no, you yeah. can't yeah. do the self. Yeah. No. So what, not the what skull. No, 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 you can't. Yeah. So with the skull itself, so what manipulation? I know inside the mouth, what you're going to be doing. What do you do to the skull itself? It's it's just basically getting on areas that that may be stuck. One of the things that which is much healthier for them. Such a common common thing. People call it TMJ, which is actually temporal mandibular joint. It's actually TMT, temporal And the TMJ joint is right here, where the two bones connect, right here. People clench their teeth and have the problem. People grind their teeth and have the problem. Right. And it's so common. It's, it's, so I think it's com- very, very and common. That um, I love this that. Bone right here. This yeah. bone. Yeah. You know, uh, so I have this your, uh, that's program we're producing bone. called Chi Angels. That bone does the same movement like, uh, as the ilium women, bone of your pelvis uh, down, down low uh, here. And, and, we, and what uh, we found is when people and, uh, clench their teeth, they tend to have an area in their pelvis. One joint on one side of the other tends to be a little looser. And so there are ways to prevent clenching on your own. Yes. So I a lot of that. times when I was in law school, behavior from I happening. At a so what happens if, if it's a little bit loose and, and a joint down here, it translates all the way up to the, the skull because yeah. they do work together. It's all connected, yes. They all work together. So all day long, all day long, when you're weight-bearing, which includes sitting or standing, when you're weight-bearing, if the brain is getting a signal from your pelvis that there's a little instability down here, and you're not necessarily going to feel pain from it, but the brain feels it. Those are really good. What happens is as soon as you lie down, I like a burger, and you don't have but the weight to the burger anymore. To me the same body's burger, natural yeah. reaction okay. is to if I can tighten up here, clench the jaws, and try to open up that brain. So the brain knows it needs that, that circulation so and that, that yes, movement. Yes, yes. So the clench these down and, 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 you know, that's in, really, and the jaw will tighten up. So here's the secret. Write this one down, too, because I know everybody knows somebody that clenches their teeth when they sleep. There's a little spot on the bottom of the ball of your foot. Okay. That natural arch kind of underneath where your toes are. Mm-hmm. If you right rub now, your feet so, on a ball I mean, or yeah. on, on a foot massager so or even with your fingers it's before you lay down, so you have to do it before you lay down. Yeah. And just kind of massage, get to take your thumb mm-hmm. and massage in that area. Right. Press right. down. So yes. who would have that what that will do is it'll, it'll erase that signal that has been sent up to the brain all day while you've been weight bearing. It'll erase that signal so that you don't clench your teeth. Taking care of the planet. So people are having reflexology in their feet. They should be sleeping really good. They should. The only thing I would do on But at least this is something you can do on your own. Right. right. Yeah, and it'd be good if you take a little lavender oil as you're massaging that area and put a little lavender oil there too for relaxation. That would be great as well. Yeah, what a wonderful, great Obviously, because he Now, what about people who have died? You know, who believes that? Ringing of the ears. That's a whole other show. Yeah. Um, this is a major, so major because I, um, I, I also do Qigong, what's, what's so that helps with, these with women since, as well. Yeah. You know, these past, um, and I guess if these bones of the skull so are not moving right, a lot of times that's when you're going to get that. that Correct. Ringing. So it's a buzz we sound really Yeah, and it's yeah. really yeah. irritating. Yeah. Yeah. Really, yeah. really yeah. irritating. Yeah. It's a simple uh, cranial adjustment with breathing and, and helping these bones right here. And yes, so after he died, we made a demand on the estate. That well, frankly, I think all of his money ADD. should go to the victims. That's so common. You know, just the well, let me go back to the other because right. one uh, thing we get the, we and do this part so with every condition. We look at every aspect. Mm-hmm. So right people would bring in the ear. We want to make sure that they're not having a diet high in aspartame or no aspartame because aspartame is one of the causes too. And look at the emotions as we talked about the emotions, but definitely aspartame would definitely cause. A lot of ringing of the ears, the and then you know, and when move on up, been move up the ladder, I don't think and get your adjustment done. Right. Mm-hmm. Just because this like here is anything. so important. Because there's so if many people lost that person, really complain. That's one of my questions on my questionnaire. You, if you, been you know, it's pretty in depth. People say, "Oh so God, I got this." Seventeen age. But it asks a lot of questions, and there's a reason for each one of those questions. And you want to rule out pathology, obviously. Oh yes, most definitely. Yeah. And I'm glad that people are finally starting. Touching on ADD, ADHD, yeah. and yeah. so we're going to fight and him. What I have found in my practice to, is, especially with the children, the right if I teach I them to just his, put their finger in the roof of their mouth the and they Islands breathe and just kind of push Islands, up and that's on where we're this, go. I mean, do you think they'll get just part of their? Yes. No, I turn it to the sides because they can see your finger. See where her finger is all the way. 
they didn't inside get rich and the mouth. By just rolling and the child can do this to themselves. Yeah, and their thumbs. So, so if they're, if they're feeling like really frantic and out of control, they can just tip their thumb, and as they breathe in, just kind of push up. Most of the time, we get victories for our clients. Release it and push down. So we know how to do it, and that's what we expected in the Epstein case. How did they feel? And it works really, really well for calming them down. How much repetition? You know, about three or three times. So a couple times a day. If yeah, if or if they're feeling really side effects. To it, so. No, no, and it's it's just getting that said, natural skull so movement going away. What about people who used to suck their thumb and kind of push it? They do, so they, they, do they do say that, that that's a self um, we've been working right calming authorities too. process that especially so babies go through. The other so if, they, said, if they do feel like no, I don't like wish death on anyone, but need the help, kind of a that they that yeah. naturally yeah. calms yeah. them down. They just figure it out. Really, maybe that's why this one can't retaliate. And I've, that's why one looks different than the other sure. <laughs> from years ago. But I was calm. Thank you. We've also had really great results with dyslexia, and that's a very frustrating, frustrating learning disability for people. And fear is the biggest hurdle that my clients have in all of our cases. I have a little sign in my office. It's a simple, simple test. Again, non-invasive. You're just testing their arm strength and having them move in different orders. positions oh and a lot God, of times you can get that we're really, maybe with not okay yes sure, because but at least get it so that uh, they have a little more clarity listening, yeah part of, uh, that's what we want you know day by day the a better of quality of life mm -hmm. to them. moment by moment I hope right. they will and the more you do this the, the better you, or or you should hear whatever feel they feel comfortable representing them but but i do hope those are some very good tips that you have given some information that everyone if you don't have this going on in your home, women. you know someone and else so, it does. Right. Sometimes Especially the relaxation and like that. And say, it's not you know, so me. that could be for a, it's, adults as but well. But it is, because you'll heal. You know, right. you'll heal. If you're feeling but really stressed out, just go into another room mm -hmm. and then place your thumb, you, you know, wash that's your hands. Place your thumb in your mouth and just press up and do the deep breathing. When you breathe in, breathe in. Breathe in and push up. And you don't have to push very hard. Okay. Just a very gentle I'm glad you said that. I'm glad you said that. So <laughs> people coming in and going, I don't know what I did to the roof of my mouth. I didn't tell you to do it that hard. And wash the nails if you have sharp yes, nails. Yes. Watch those nails. So <laughs> yes, absolutely. Yeah. So I want to say, make sure before you do that, make sure you do wash your hands. Very good. Because this is not just for women; it's also for men and children. So this is wonderful. So come on, you got great tips here. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I know one of the things that you and I talk quite a bit about, and I really do want to focus on intention. Mm -hmm. Intention is such a powerful thing, and, and like for my year. my own case, and my own healing, my intention was there. I was not going to let them cut open my head. In my type of tumor that I had, it came back in about 80 percent of cases after surgery. Mm -hmm. And I just started in practice, and I, I did not want to have my head opened up. And I wanted to figure out why did I have this. And so, with intention of healing, I think a lot of people have had major successes. In fact, I just read one today that I thought was so fantastic. Just don't wait. If you're babies. thinking about it, you know, the statutes yes. of limitations. You, the, and the and if you don't know, together, just reach out and ask. And right, and exactly. It's a free it's call. It's a free call. Yeah. And they couldn't What's figure out why, and they found out that Thank he had a malignant you, tumor. Thank you, Catherine. Mm -hmm. You're so lovely. You're doing. Did chemo and radiation, and, and he didn't respond in. well to it. We so they changed, that, uh, like I did. I forgot to tell this part. I actually fasted for 10 days. I just said, i got a clean house because something's causing that tumor. But they changed to a vegan diet, and their intention was to get rid of the tumor, and it was successful. Mm, okay. And so the power of the mind is very, very is great. Very, yes. Yes. And you know, you brought up in the very beginning uh, about your eyesight and not mm -hmm. having the closure and forgiveness with your father. Um, and this is going to be very short, but I had a flat tire one day and met this wonderful mechanic. And I said, well, you know, this whole journey was so beautiful. Met this wonderful mechanic. And he started telling me the story about his best friend who... Uh, he kind of just left his wife, divorced his wife, left her. Didn't know she was pregnant when he left. Uh, he, he remarried and had two kids. Uh, his, his friend had gone to him and said, you know, man, you have a son. You, you have a son. Something that I want. I have six girls. You have a mm -hmm. son. And he had two girls by his second marriage. He said, don't you want to see your son? He wants to meet you, you know, as he was growing up. And he said, I never want to ever see him or her ever and he went blind oh. 
Now, there's usually some medical things that, you know, are going on, too. But as soon as he kept, he said it repeatedly, I never wanted to see. And when he told me that, I said, wow, and he's blind? I said, but he said it. I never want to see. You have to be careful with words. Right. Words are powerful. And even getting well, I had a person who said, I mean, she had um, breast cancer. And I usually don't like to say the C word. I just say abnormal cells, people mm-hmm. who know me. And it was so bad that it really looked as though she should have had it removed, had a mastectomy. And she said, I came into the world in one piece. I'm not having pieces removed from my body. I'm not having my breast removed. My breast will heal. And so I sent her to someone else because it was so bad. I didn't want her to have a systemic infection. Right. Uh, and plus she wasn't keeping it clean. And that's what my fear was. You got to do everything too if you want to try to keep, you know. And she came back to me about six months later, totally healed. Mm-hmm. Totally healed. But that was, I did as much for her. But they kept saying, we don't understand why you're not real sick why this is not happening with you because the nutrition and everything we had already done but her thought i am going to keep my breasts the same thing with my grandfather who said i'm going to live to be 100. he told me this since i was a little girl little girl and i said okay granddaddy okay granddaddy i'm going to live to be 100. okay granddaddy and two years ago, um, probably about two years ago, he turned in January. Mm-hmm. He turned 100. Well, and so the next day he stopped eating. So I said, "Well, Granddaddy, you're you're not leaving us yet." And so he lived for about eight months longer. And then he said, "You know, I'm I'm ready to go. I'm ready to go. I live past my 100." <laughs> wow. And so the intent, you know, uh, we we have to be careful. So my, my intent was to never grow old, looking wiser, uh, never have menopause, which I never have. Um, and so those were some of my things. I said, mm-hmm. that is not mine. Menopause is not my friend. Now, I watch hormone levels and do all that, but I'm not having these symptoms people have, the hot flashes, the this, the that, the moose. I'm not having that, and I never did. So the things we tell ourselves is how what we become. You know, I mean, that reminded me of when I was doing my Qigong training with Dr. Mm-hmm. Effie Chow. We were talking about the power of words. Yes. And we were on a, a news segment one time, and these the um, anchors were just bantering back and forth, back and forth. And, and you know, she's like, well, he's like the little brother that I never wanted. And, and mm-hmm. she's just like, wow, you can't talk like that. You know, you've got to be careful. You need to lift each other up. I mean, people are starting their day by watching you. And, and they're like, what are you talking about? And so she gave this demonstration. And she said uh, she had them hold their arms strong. And mm-hmm. again, that's another a good way to Well, she monitor. said hold your arms strong. You just hold it straight yeah, out. Yeah, hold it straight out like this. Okay, straight out strong. And, and she would test their strength. And she'd say, say something nice about him. And this anchor was like, I can't think of anything. And mm-hmm. she said, say you like his tie, but mean it. And so she's like, oh, I like your tie, and it was strong. She goes, now say something else. And she's like, you're just such a, you know, such a dork or something like that. And, and she couldn't hold her arm strong. So we started talking about words and, and mm-hmm. the importance of them. And when you use the word just, everybody uses the word just. You know, like Nike, just do it. Just absolutely takes our energy away. Mm. Test, test on your friends. Have them hold out their arm. Say, do it. Test their arm strength. Then have them say, just do it. And they will lose their strength in their arms. So the power of words are really, really important of what you put out there just. to people. So Sorry, Nike. <laughs> might want to get a new logo. <laughs> yeah, just do it. Do not use the word digest. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Or I'll try. I try. We try will never work. No. I, I like what uh, Les Brown, very dear friend, he says, try to sit down in a chair. Try to sit down in a chair. You either sit down or you don't. Right. Yeah. Just try. Yeah. So you either do or don't. I, I try to remove that from my vocabulary. It's, it's, it can be hard. It, it is hard. Because every time I say the word, I say, oh, you know what? You know, um, I don't know if I'm going to be able to make it. But uh, I will call you if I can. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Perfect. So we start 
you know, finding another way to say it so you don't say, I try. Because usually when you say, I try, you don't go anyway. Right. You don't make it. I will do it. I will do it. <laughs> Feels good, doesn't it? Yeah, I will do it. <laughs> then you got to work hard and be committed exactly. and do it. <laughs> exactly. But then yes. you feel good about yourself. Yeah, definitely. You took definitely. care of it. Mm-hmm. So that was really good. I love that. So we have covered so much now. We have a few more minutes left. And in just a couple of minutes, what do you want my listening audience to take away from. I want you to look into the camera like you're looking into their eyes. And what do you want to tell them, each person? I want you to believe in your body and your mind. I want you to know that the health is within. You have the power to do whatever it is that you feel you want to be successful. All of us were created with this ability to heal. And it's all in our mind. We can, we can take care of it. Think through it clearly. Know that we own this because we are very powerful. And if you wear out your body, where are you going to live? I love that. Isn't that great? That is. That is. I want to thank you for that. And I want to thank you so much for being here today. Thank you. You're just absolutely amazing. And (laughs) I just love your spirit. It's just wonderful. It's just something about today and right now. I feel full, but it's full of joy. It's full of joy. Yeah. So people I know saw me wipe away a little tear, mm-hmm. but it's full of joy. It's just something wonderful I feel is about to happen. Take this information in, share it with your friends and family because it's something that could save your life or your family's life. And these, these are simple procedures. Yeah. And uh, we are going to put up your website okay. um, or better yet, uh, he has your website already already yeah. up. So. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much, Jarvis, over there. <laughs> thank you. And thank I you. do, I do love working with challenging cases. Those people. You that, sound like me, because yeah. I that's I didn't leave work to ten thirty because of some challenging cases. Yeah. You and I have so much in common. No. But I'm not a chiropractor, so I don't do what you do. But it's amazing in my CRT test, mm-hmm. um, which is FDA approved for breast screening. It's a, it, 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 there's an axle component. Yeah. And people with uh, TMJ, migraine headaches, one leg shorter than the other, all this stuff comes up in their report. Mm-hmm. So I was asked, are you having headaches? Yes. Well, then I don't do that part. So they will be coming to you. Yay. Yeah, they'll be I coming to you that. for all of the migraine headaches and all these other things. And, and general maintenance. Yeah. And, you know, and I have to tell people, when you're on a, a weight reduction program, mm-hmm. not weight loss, because I'm not trying to find your weight, okay? <laughs> when you're on a weight reduction program, m- more, so, more so a lifestyle change, your body should be adjusted after because things shift after you gain or lose. Right. You know, things will shift. So you should definitely always have an adjustment done after losing weight because that pull from the weight on the hips and on those muscles and on your spine, you know, it totally has shifts. So we're going to be doing a lot of business together. Yeah, because you do things I don't do and vice versa. So I'm just really thankful for you being here today. Thank you. And I want each one, there's so much going on right now. Please, please take time to love yourself. Please take time to pamper yourself. Please, if you even do your own foot massage, get yourself some lavender, take time for you. Take time to do your deep breathing exercises. Take time to call someone else and tell them I love you. Because you might not have that opportunity to pick up that phone to make that call again. So when someone is on your mind, take time to call them if you have a chance. I don't have time to talk. Just call to say I'm thinking about you and I love you. There's a reason I'm saying this today. So for those who are listening, please take time to do that. I want to thank everyone for tuning in today to the New Wellness TV with Dr. Lee. I have something very exciting for you for 2018. We're adding another component to this show that's going to be hot. So everybody's going to tune in and get well and be happy through this wonderful journey in life. And again, I always say something, and I have everybody to repeat after me. But before I say that, I want to say that your brain and your thoughts are so powerful. So... Keep in mind, keep those thoughts clean. And whatever you want to happen in your life, envision that. 
You know, people are doing vision boards and different things, but envision yourself doing wonderful, great things. Stop. Don't see the negative all the time in people and in yourself. See the positive and watch how it shows up for you. That's my friend Robbie Motter. Watch how it shows up for you. So I want to say, take care of yourself. Now, repeat after me. I am. I am. I am. So grateful. So grateful. That I am. That I am. A magnet. A magnet. For miracles. For miracles. Hug yourself. Hug someone else. Have a blessed day. Thank you. Thank you. It's time for New Wellness TV with Dr. Lee. Join your host, the accomplished Dr. Sherilyn Lee, as she welcomes the leading experts in health and well-being as they explore the advancements in natural health, physical fitness, nutrition, integrative medicine, and self-discovery. It's time for New Wellness TV with Dr. Lee. Join your host, the accomplished Dr. Sherilyn Lee, as she welcomes the leading experts in health and well-being as they explore the advancements in natural health, physical fitness, nutrition, integrative medicine, and self-discovery. Good day, everyone. Um, I don't care if it's day or night you're watching the show i do care i just want to say greetings to everyone and thank you so much for tuning in today to another wonderful episode of new wellness tv with dr lee i just want to say that i am so excited i have a wonderful guest with me today as always i'm just meeting her and her beautiful mom uh which is in the studio you won't see her but she's here uh, i just want to say that she's going to be sharing some information with us that is really after me last night being in the hospital with a dear friend who just had a stroke, this is life-threatening. This is life-threatening information. And I want to ask a question before I start. And also, I want you to grab a pen and paper. Pen and paper, because you're going to need to take notes. Because you never know who or a family member or someone else. You might need to know these uh, techniques to really see what's going on. So have you or anyone you know ever sustained brain trauma, car accident, a fall as a child? You know, sometimes we bump our head. Um, I had a new car, and it was kind of aerodynamic, and every time I would get in, I wasn't used to it being so low, so I would bump my head, which I really think I had a couple of contusions from that. You don't have to lose consciousness to have a concussion, Okay, to have a concussion, you don't have to lose consciousness. What is all this doing to the brain? So this is what my guest is going to be talking about today. Dr. Danny, I want to thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm excited. They're all cheering us on. No wonder, bud. How wonderful. Thank you, audience. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so, you know, let's just jump right in. Your bio went out. Uh, we sent out an email. Okay. So we sent out your bio to everyone. Okay. Um, but we're going to be talking about, you know, the brain and what's happening and how to test these wonderful techniques that you were telling me about when it comes to to look quickly for brain tra trauma. Right, right. Uh, whether it's the right or left side of the brain or if it's true trauma. So we're going to be sharing that. And I want, like I said again, please uh, have a pen and paper to take notes because this is important. And we all have bumped our head on a cabinet or, you know, uh, you know, just simple things and not knowing down the line, why do I have this type of symptom? And it was basically from head trauma. Right. And, you know, you asked that as one of your questions, but that's something because I worked in the emergency room and used to ask a lot of questions. So that was part of the questioning I would always ask. Trauma is always the number one question. What type right. of trauma that led you into this? So before we start, tell me about you. Okay. Please. Um, my name is Dr. Danielle Olson, and I'm originally from Minnesota. I now work in Santa Monica. 
And we met several weeks ago. Um, I'm a chiropractor, and I specialize in a form of healthcare called craniopathy, mm -hmm. which is what we got talking about yes. at a meeting one time about how important it is to take care of the skull. And a lot of people don't realize that we have. You know, before we get into that, I know you're moving kind of fast. Yeah. But tell me who you are. I mean, you're here from where? You just moved to California. Oh, I just moved here from Minnesota. From Minnesota. Yeah. Okay. So just and tell me about you and. I think, you know, why I think... Did you, why did you go into this field? I think one of the... Re well, I will tell you that. I think okay, okay. One of the One of the reasons why I'm here is I've, I've had a very magical life. I developed a brain tumor when I was 31 years old. Mm. Uh, I was nearly blind, and knowing neurology like I do, I, I realized all the symptoms I had it was behind my optic nerves, and I had a very, very small amount of vision left enough where I could see about the size of a quarter. Okay. Which made driving very difficult. And... How old were you? When, I was 31. 31. Oh, yeah. that was very young. Yes, yes. Very young. And part of, part of where it was located affected my pituitary gland, so I could not have another baby, and I really wanted another baby. And it, being trained in complementary medicine like we are, mm -hmm. I decided to do natural approach to it. It wasn't a malignant tumor, mm -hmm. so I'm not crazy. <laughs> but I started listening to things that were happening around me, people that were being introduced to me. And I met a craniosacral therapist. Yes. And in chiropractic school, we're trained in anatomy and physiology. And we exactly. look at the body as a whole, the chemical, physical, spiritual, emotional, emotional. being. Yes. yes. And Craniopathy, which is my specialty, is something a lot of doctors don't know about. No, they don't. So I went to this cranial sacral therapist, and I saw her two times, and I realized she did something with the head. I had something in my head, and I wanted to get rid of it. Mm -hmm. And during our second course, as I was driving to her, her office, I was terrified because it was winter in Minnesota. Okay. <laughs> and... The whole time I was driving there, I just kept saying, today's the day this is going to be healed. I know it can be healed. Yes. The body is the able to be created. The mind is so powerful, too. Absolutely. But you're setting that intent. You setting know. that intent the whole yes, time, the yes. whole time. And you and I have talked about this, the power of the mind. Yes. And as I was laying there, I had some very interesting experiences. Met an angel, um, had some conversation with the angel, mm -hmm. asked what if I was doing the right thing and they told me you need to look within which I thought was interesting because you know I love working with the brain and I was like well, look within what does that mean during the course of our our session this angel brought my father to me and he had passed away four and a half years earlier mm -hmm. and Sorry. I had a conversation with him and apologized for not seeing him before he died and as soon as I said that I realized Oh my gosh, I didn't see you before you died. The tumor manifested right behind my optic yes, nerves. Yes. And, as, and we had talked about this in my doctorate about how important it is to acknowledge when things exactly. have bothered us. Mm -hmm. and, and I never realized I didn't forgive myself for that. And as soon as I realized, I said, oh my gosh, Dad. The power of forgiveness. I manifested yes. this, didn't I? Mm -hmm. And as soon as I said it out loud, Something p penetrated the top of my head, and I received a miracle healing. And it took a matter of minutes, and the tumor vanished. I have no scar tissue. I had another baby. <laughs> and since then... What a beautiful story. Oh, it's, but um, the power of forgiveness, this is what I tell everyone. Right. It's amazing. Right. Yes. And how great for you to be with your friend last night at oh, the hospital. Yes, yes. So Thank important you. to reach out Thank to people. You. So since that, that tumor healing happened, I have had some experiences where I've been able to also help facilitate other mm -hmm. miracle healings. And getting to know the brain as well as I did, I decided to branch off and do a specialty called craniopathy. Wonderful. And that's what got us here. So yes. <laughs> we were talking about head trauma. And, and head trauma doesn't necessarily have to be a concussion. It doesn't exactly. have to be something that knocks you out. A simple bonk to bonk the head. To the head. And, and when, I, when I ask the initial questions to my clients, or there's a question on the front page that says, please tell me about when you hit your head. And I will tell you, more often than not, people are like, I never hit my head. And I'm like, never? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Ever? Really? And they'll say, well, no, but boy, I've been dealing with depression for years 
well, how long? Oh, two and a half years ago. Like, isn't that interesting? Back in our history, we were talking about mm-hmm. how you hit your head onto the kitchen cupboard door two and a half years ago. Yes. <laughs> two and a half. Just and, follow the and pattern. And all of a sudden, are like, yeah. oh, I get it. Now mm-hmm. I get it. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, yeah, I guess there was this, and you know, I fell off a horse. And, you know, they, all of a sudden, people will remember remember things. I had one person, she was 72 years old, and as I'm questioning her, I'm like, it really seems like you've had significant head trauma. Right. And she's